uh, we have very uh, distinguished uh, experts. Uh, Mario already introduced them. Uh, I'll say once again, uh, Professor Inisar Pinguneri from Izmir, uh, Turkey, Eduardo Martin Sanz from Spain, Daniela Nuti from Italy. We will start with uh, uh, Professor Enisa Pinguneri. He's going to mention about the new aspects of horizontal canal PTPB. I think he's uh, going to mention uh, short arm analytiasis, atypical forms, cupulopathy, canal chain. So you have the you have the verses, please. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you, dear Marco, for, for the great introduction. And I would like to thank also to my uh, dear brother and mentor, Professor Özgür Gim, for giving me uh, the chance uh, to make a presentation uh, among these distinguished guests. So I would like to use my time and uh, make a presentation about uh, the new pathophysiological aspects of horizontal canal BPPV. You know that horizontal canal BPPV accounts for almost uh, more than 25% of BPPV cases, of which I know at least eight different clinical forms. So uh, we try to understand uh, every day uh, any uh, new uh, forms of horizontal canal BPPV. This is my resident, Dr. Salim. Uh, we are using a 3D model uh, in order to understand the different aspects of canalid movements during maneuvers or during testing. So let's start with short arm or uh, anterior segment canalitiasis. In this form, the athletes are in the periampular area. They may be near, but not attached to the canalicular side of the cupola or maybe near the utricular side. When the involved, in this case, right ear is lowermost, apogeotrophic nystagmus occurs due to these three possible movements of the otholiths. This is the first possible, this is the second possible movement, and this is the third possible movement on which the otholith falls onto the cupola. And uh, this results uh, in inhibitory de deflection and apogeotrophic nystagmus during uh, roll fest. When the sick is your uppermost, uh, there are two possibilities depending on the location, again, an autoconium may fall in the uterine utricle, uh, and this causes a excitatory, excitatory deflection uh, and uh, results in apogeotrophic nystagmus as well in this case. And in this uh, scenario, the particle falls in the neutricle and also causes an apogeotrophic nystagmus, but this one is stronger than the first one. Uh, remember that uh, temporary geotrophic direction changing horizontal positional nystagmus is observed in canalitiasis. However, persistent nystagmus is the hallmark of cupulopathy. Uh, cupulolithiasis or light cupula co uh, conforms the uh, head of uh, the topic of uh, cupulopathy. If the cupula is uh, heavier, uh, than the surrounding in the, in the lymph, in this case, uh, the particles are touched on the canalicular side of the cupola, uh, and the cupola is pulled down uh, in the roll position uh, due to uh, gravity, and this results in persistent apogeotrophic nystagmus. This is right heavy cupola, right roll. And during left roll, uh, apogeotrophic nystagmus occurs again, but this one is stronger uh, from the first one. Uh, let's check uh, cupular lithiasis when the particles are on the utricular side. This is right heavy cupula, particles are on the uh, utricular side, right roll test. Uh, the deflection of the cupula results in a apogeotrophic type of nystagmus due to uh, the ampullofugal ampullo blood flow of the endolymph. And during left, left roll test, again, gravity results in a deflection in the inhibitory way, uh, in the excitatory way, uh, uh, excuse me, and this results in an apogeotrophic nystagmus, which is stronger on the halicid side again. 
But uh, let me remind you that uh, during, uh, during these tests, we cannot identify it on which side is the cupola, uh, on which side uh, on the cupola the particles are attached. Uh, so we cannot differentiate the cupola cases on the utricular side or canonical side by doing these tests. Let's talk about light cupola. Uh, Boyan, Boyan means to be able to keep flow, keep uh, float rise uh, to the top of a liquid. Uh, in this case, uh, there is light cupola on the right side. Uh, in the supine position, a uh, persistent left beating nice status may be observed due to an inhibitory deflection of the cupola by buoyancy. During right roll, uh, the cupola uh, is deflected upwards and uh, this amplifiable deflection of the right cupola induces a geotrophic, stronger geotrophic nice tables. Uh, the etiology of light cupola is, uh, uh, this is the left row, and the same thing happens again. Uh, the cupola is lighter and induces a, uh, induces a uh, geotrophic nice tables. The etiology is thought to be due to changes in the density of the cupola or envelope itself. Uh, Labyrinth uh, hypoperfusion or uh, the disruption of blood brain barrier leading to increased proteins in the inner ear may be other causes. <coughs> uh, so, uh, the diagnosis is suspected when we see a persistent horizontal direction changing nystagmus during the roll test. Uh, remember, it's geotrophic again, but no latency and uh, it's persistent more than uh, two minutes in some cases and always struggle towards normal ear. Bow and lean tests are similar with canal etiasis, but uh, there's a null point in, uh, in this case, uh, in, in cupulopathy cases, uh, also in uh, heavy cupula as well. Uh, when the head of the patient is rotated 15 to 45 degrees to the affected side, the nystagmus stops. And the null point is always ipsilational and it shows the uh, sick ear in uh, each case. So it's uh, better to look for a null point in those cases. And my last uh, topic will be on canalid, canalid jam. Uh, large masses of autoconia could be trapped inside the canals, like it happened in the Swiss Canal recently. And these plaques may be more common than appreciated and might be responsible for some unusual patterns of nystagmus. As the debris moves to a narrow portion of the canal, the cornea may include may occlude the human and become jammed. Mm -hmm. This may occur spontaneously uh, or a complication following a repositioning maneuver. Uh, canal jam in the wrong deflection of the cupola, <clears throat> either in the uh, ultrafugal or pedal uh, base, and both uh, of the deflections would cause a Persistent nystagmus, regardless of the uh, head position. I mean a direction a fixed persistent nystagmus, mimicking acute vestibular neuropathy. So in some cases, a canal chain may uh, mimic uh, vestibular neuritis. Okay. Uh, in this paper uh, reported by Bronstein, rapid head shaking in the opposite direction moves the uh, autolytic mass and uh, they were supposed to plug the canal. And uh, plugging cuts off the envelope flow and prevents the deflected cupola to return back to its resting position, leading to a persistent nystagmus. Unless the patients do the uh, head shake again, uh, there's a persistent uh, direction fixed nystagmus. And this is uh, the uh, video of the case after horizontal canal plugging. No jam and no nystagmus. This is the mechanism of uh, head shaking uh, this diagnosis due to uh, the trapped particles causing the jam. In this case, the largest cupular deflection occurs during head position rolls uh, towards the left side. Because, but uh, there is a direct fixed nice diagnosis on the right side as well. And this progressively reduces, but does not stop 
as the patient uh, moves to the supine or uh, lying on the right side because uh, there is a persistent cupular deflection cutting off the endolymph flow. So uh, summarizing it, uh, direction fixed spontaneous horizontal nystagmus uh, may be first sign of uh, canal jam, which is thought to be very rare. And this uh, direction fixed horizontal nystagmus does not change direction with, with the positional tests. And the velocity of the nystagmus and intensity of vertigo depends, of, depends on head position. And one important point is that to look for conversion or geotropization. This means that a conversion of unidirectional position nystagmus to geotrophic nystagmus. This may occur during tests or by head shaking. And uh, the, uh, the phenomenon of geotrophization uh, is critical to be confident in, in diagnosing canalid jam. So I would like to thank you for your uh, attention. So uh, I, I must stress that I'm always learning uh, from my colleagues and my uh, dear friends. Uh, I hope to learn a lot in the future and understand the uh, physiology, pathology of horizontal canal as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.